Hey guys, welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers. Lieutenant William here. So today we're talking about the upcoming Picard series, which has officially been named Star Trek Picard. So it will be STP, not to be confused with the Stone Temple Pilots or the Motor Oil. Anyway, the big news is Michael Chabon has been named as the showrunner, in other words, the boss of the show. So who is Michael Chabon? Well, Michael Chabon has been involved with the writing of the Picard series from the very beginning, but he's never been a showrunner before for any show. He's never even come close to doing something like this. He's really very inexperienced when it comes to working within film and television. He is a Pulitzer Prize winner, though, and he also has a Nebula and a Hugo Award. I'm no expert on Michael Chabon, but from a little research, it seems like he's a serious writer who got famous with a great novel and then decided he didn't really like the kind of writing he'd been doing or any of what was currently passing for serious literature and started trying to write stuff that had more plot and wasn't so pretentious and contrived. He's been met with mixed reviews since then. He's known for including gay and bisexual characters in his work and also for including small connections in his work to allow for the possibility of it all taking place in the same universe. I'm not familiar with much of his work, but I have to say the little I've seen from him didn't impress me too much. As far as Star Trek goes, he has one credit. He co-wrote one of the four Star Trek Short Treks episodes, Calypso, featuring the jump to the 33rd century, the evolved artificial intelligence of the starship Discovery shipboard computer, and the human soldier known as Kraft. This is definitely one of the stronger short treks, it may be the best, but that's not saying much. Star Trek short treks is basically the worst thing to ever officially bear the name Star Trek. Calypso's not bad, it's just sort of predictable, and it's not doing anything new that hasn't already been done in Star Trek. It's interesting because it's a science fiction adaptation of an ancient Greek myth, but it's also just another Star Trek story where someone falls in love with a computer and then calls it off. Sure, it was original in that it was the shipboard computer instead of a holodeck program, but once she takes holographic form, the difference is so thin as to be non-existent. You may have seen a film called Wonder Boys that came out in 2000 with Michael Douglas, Katie Holmes, Robert Downey Jr., and Tobey Maguire. You probably didn't see it, but anyway, it's based on a novel by Michael Chabon, though he didn't write the screenplay. It's an okay movie. It's not a great movie. I haven't read the book, also called Wonder Boys. Uh, when the film was filming, someone actually told Bob Dylan about it, and he decided to write and record a song for it. The song, called Things Have Changed, is a terrific song, and it won the Oscar that year for Best Original Song for a Film. The song is much better than the film. If you saw Spider-Man 2, also with Tobey Maguire, about a third of that film is taken from a script that Michael Chabon wrote. Director Sam Raimi wanted Chabon to write the third Spider-Man movie, but it didn't happen. Chabon was also involved in writing the lyrics for the Mark Ronson album, Uptown Special, so make of that what you will. Don't believe me! Just look it up. While Chabon is a sought-after writer, you may notice a lack of science fiction credits. That's because Michael Chabon is definitely not a science fiction writer, until very recently. Most of his work is set in the real world in the not-so-distant past. He's dabbled in fantasy, and he has an alternate reality or two here and there, but nothing called science fiction, really, until now. You may also find it interesting to know that the famous directing duo the Coen brothers wrote a script for a novel of Chabon's, but then seemed to get bored with the idea and let the rights for the project lapse back to Chabon, never making the film. Chabon won the Pulitzer for a novel about two Jewish cousins who make it big writing and drawing comic books around the time of World War II. It's called The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. Chabon has also dabbled in comic book writing himself. Of course, the last time we saw Captain Picard, it was in a comic book, Star Trek Countdown, which is an official tie-in to the first Star Trek thing to come out under the new Bad Robot license, Star Trek 2009. The film that first showed us the Kelvin timeline and how it connected to the universe we all know and love of Picard. Bad Robot is J.J. Abrams' production company. Alex Kurtzman was one of a bunch of writers involved in writing the new Star Trek movies, and he was then put in charge of Star Trek Discovery. 
Now, some people believe Shaban has been made the showrunner for Picard because Alex Kurtzman is being sidelined and removed from power after a disappointing financial return and only mixed reviews with Star Trek Discovery. Kurtzman can't officially be fired as the head of all things Star Trek because he has a five-year contract, but the fact that they're putting someone with no experience in as showrunner for Picard is interesting. Shaban's a serious writer, so... I want to say I have some faith in him. Patrick Stewart should bring some quality control to the project, so that's another reason to have faith in this series, even if Picard has lost faith in himself, or in us, as the interviewer suggests, in the preview for the show. Okay, now I brought this up in my in-depth analysis of the preview for the show, but I wanted to talk about it a bit more. There may be a hint that the Borg are involved in this new Picard show in the preview. If you look at all the other labels for wine from the Picard vineyards from Chateau Picard throughout the other shows and movies, it never says it's a Burgundy. When we see it in the new preview, the wine prominently displays the word as it would be in French, Bougonne, which means Burgundy. Look at how it's spelled though and try to sound it out. Keep in mind this is an American show, not a French show. So it's fair to say the intended audience isn't mostly French-speaking. Borg og ni. Well, is this a hint we'll be dealing with the Borg in some capacity? In the Next Generation episode Family, which is the first of only two times that we see the Picard family vineyard, the heart of the episode is Jean-Luc's struggle to face the trauma inflicted upon him by the Borg. So, by setting the preview in the vineyard and then focusing on this word that English speakers will pronounce borg og knee, well, it's just the kind of thing a clever writer would do to make a Star Trek fan think of the Borg, without ever actually mentioning them. It's almost like a subliminal message. I could be way off. Haha, <laughs> stupid American, you cannot pronounce anything. Anyway. Let me know what you think about Michael Shaban and the Boog, and please subscribe. Thanks a lot, everybody. Live long and prosper.